I am. We go. All right. So um, I I heard her share about this this book. And first things first is if you know anything about me, I love authentic literature. And to me, authentic literature is when it's written about someone who shares about their own experiences or their family heritage experiences, like they own the story. Anyone can write about anything they feel like. I'm an author and I write about anything I, can, I feel like. But when you write about your personal experience, there's a whole buy-in because you lived it. You know what it's like. And that's the way uh, it is with Nawal Karuni, I think her name is. She lived it. She's a, a, a daughter of immigrants. She knows what it is to grow up in a in a immigrant family and she tells about you know she starts chapter uh, the introduction to the chapter by sharing about her family and where their family is from and how her mama will talk to her in home language and she will talk to her in English but like a broken English and that made her feel embarrassed but at the same time she loved seeing how her mama would push education and trying to make sure that she was um, in an environment where she could become more than what their parents had become. Even though her parents were educators, they still are. Dad is a, a teacher. Mom is also a teacher. So it's not like she didn't have educated parents. But in the end, because she spoke other languages, because her parents had that broken English, she felt embarrassed. She felt like she didn't belong. She felt like what she was going through in her family was never, ever validated. And I tell you, when I read that, I almost cried because I felt the same thing when I was growing up as an ELL in a high school uh, setting. She describes our personal experience as diverse human beings, a parallel life. Like here's home. And you know how the teachers tell you in math, parallel is when paths never cross. That's what they tell our kids. That way they understand that parallel lines never cross. And that's the way she describes a diver diverse family feeling. They feel like home family goes one way in school and learning and academics and teachers and everything goes a different way. And it's so awkward because you go to school and you focus only on English and you don't mix home and because that's the way you are taught in schools, right? That it's all academic and you got to lose that accent and it's all about the um, acculturation and it's all about, and then you forget that, your culture and everything you lived should be merged. So it should actually be that uh, perpendicular line uh, where the roads come together. So I, I really love that, uh, the way she, she worded it like that. And then she grows up and she starts saying, you know, there are some things that I have to learn and unlearn because my, my parents it, it ingrated in me that I need to be professional, that I need to be successful, that I, which is great. Our immigrant parents work so hard to make sure that we have everything that they never had. But in then that creates a biases in us as educators on how all families should look like. So she becomes a teacher and she starts analyzing her students' lives and she realizes that her own way of being raised and the way she grew up is making her create assumptions about her students. And so she's teaching us throughout this book that we need to start with ourselves. We need to analyze ourselves. We, we have to admit that there are some biases that we need to clear out, that we need to recognize that there are some differences. And then I love how she goes into teaching us how do we do that. First, as teachers, we have the opportunity to create lessons. And I want to read to you this beautiful quote. It says, insisting that every classroom assignment, activity, or task connects directly to the child's humanity outside of the classroom walls is one of the ways we can grow authentic communicators and provide a clear bridge 
for caregivers to better understand the impact role they play at home. So when we create a lesson as a teacher, if I create a lesson, for example, one of the lessons I create is recipes. We're going to make an ESL recipe book. So I'm going to share my favorite recipe. You go home and ask your mom, what is the family's favorite recipe? And then mama says, what? You're writing about our, our food? Really? And then that is a bridge that connects school with family. And I think that's a great example of how we need, to, we have the opportunity as educators to make that connection. And so, of course, is each chapter, it's, it's, it's all different. Um, I'm going to hush a little bit and I'm going to have you respond to, to the introduction. And, and again, this is just, she's laying out the path of what the book is going to be about. And I, I hope you, you find it interesting. And, and once we chat a little bit about what I just shared with you, we're going to go into a breakout session where you're going to analyze a couple of quotes from the book. And it's going to give you a little sense of what the book study will look like in the next few weeks. So what do you have to say about what I shared with you? About the book, this is, yeah. <laughs> Um, I transferred to a new school district this year. My, my school year did not start out as planned. Um, like seven days before the start of the school year, I found out that I was being changed in my district um, to um, a teaching position that I overcame. Like I know I'm an ESL teacher and they're going to throw me back to being um, a world language teacher. And that's how I started my career. You know, no okay. hate there, but um, I know I'm an ESL teacher. Um, and culture is like always been a driver. Um, in, in, in what I do in the classroom. So when you spoke about how the author like mingles, you know, that home, like what you said, like the home culture versus the school culture being parallel, yeah, they need to intersect. Absolutely, because that's where I find that I've been successful by, by, by leveraging my students' assets, their culture, their home culture, getting to know them, the, you know, not just like the, 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 the leaves of the tree, but, you know, the bark and the, and the, and the, and the, and the roots as well. Um, that's, that's very important. So right now in my new school district, they're doing a unit that centers identity, that centers culture, yes. you know, like, um, you know, the um, indigenous um, people before, you know, colonization. Mm -hmm. So I find that this is like a wonderful opportunity um, because also the school does focus on, 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 on school climate, okay. you know, how to <laughs> encourage culture in the school community with the parents, with the children, how to like intersect all of that. So in thinking about, um, you know, this is something that I need to read more about, to learn more about, to, right. to discuss more, like how to encourage more engagement or find, you know, like, opportunity not so much as like oh listen it's the holiday season let's do a friendsgiving i mean friendsgiving is mm. cool but you know it's nice but is that you know like how does how does culture fit into that like what type of culture that. we're looking right. to uplift you know right. so yeah. um those are my thoughts yeah. thank you thank you for sharing who else jump in Well, I like that you said authentic communicators. That's what I, that quote, um, that was really good because I, you know what I do. <laughs> and so I yeah. just think it's um, with instruction that can be with instruction, but just in um, just, if we want our kids to have authentic communication and, mm -hmm. and teach them that they mm -hmm. have to have compelling things to communicate about. Nice. And so I think that that's, is just, what better way than yeah. things at home and bridging that? So, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Um, I really, what, what I heard was how you need to analyze yourself. Um, I think that that is something that we really don't have a lot of time to do. I mean, we don't have a lot of time to do anything, but I think the fact that you know, with that, understanding of your uh, exactly that your biases you don't know what's what you're doing so I think that a lot of times it's like this thing where we don't one we don't talk and that 
talking about it. How can we be authentic and can we really figure out who we are and what we're bringing to the table? Yes. Thank you for sharing that. That also struck a chord with me too. Sometimes, you know, I do and do and do and it's like, oh, what am I doing wrong? Well, it's not that I'm doing wrong. It's just different. I just need to step back and find what works for every family and, and start with me reflecting of what I'm doing and how am I doing it. Great. Thank you for saying that. And I think that's important because I I even have to stop myself from saying I like I know how I grew up. I grew up and there was not a bookshelf like this beautiful bookshelf. Uh, you know, and I can't assume that all of my newcomers have an an empty bookshelf at home. You know, that's that that's even 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 me as a diverse um, individual. I have to make sure that I am analyzing my own biases and um, it, and get to know my students. And she talks about in the introduction, if we really want to teach the whole child. We need to get to know them. <laughs> There's no other way. We can't, we have to stop assuming, we have to break our biases, get to know them. And as a teacher, why not use our time teaching them our lessons? Like I, right now, I'm not planning any lessons. I'm going into the classroom, so I don't have the opportunity to create those lessons. But when I interact with students, I can, I can make sure that I get to know them, that I, I ask questions, that I get to know about their families a little more. And again, I, I'm starting to do family engagement nights when I bring my families in. And it's a challenge. You know, I was saying at the beginning of the meeting that at the elementary level, I had family engagement nights where I had 70 families come at one time. And now at the high school level, this is my seventh year. And I'm telling you, finally, during my seventh year, I celebrated my last quarter uh, family night with 13 families. I mean, it was just like, ah, you should have seen me. I was taking pictures. I was posting it everywhere. I was so excited because it takes work. But we need to be consistent. And that's what lured me to wanted to read the book because Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I need not, maybe I'm not maybe I'm not doing anything wrong. Maybe I need to do something different, right? And I, I'm hoping the book is going to give me those tips. And just by reading the introduction, I'm telling you, I already shared three, four quotes that golly just blew my mind. That if we if we really like the way listen to this one, the way she closes the introduction blew my mind. Listen to this. Um all right, where is it? Uh, hold on. I shared it. it I was like, I'm going to frame this quote. It says, without the belief that all families and caregivers have these strengths, even when home and community experiences look very different from that we imagine or we are used to, even if their definition of success do not match ours, we cannot form true partnership. And most important, we cannot authentically reach and teach the whole child. Right there. Seriously, I have a mindset of what success looks like. But if I don't team up with my parents and I understand what their mentality of success is like, what right do I have to be teaching that child? If I really want to teach the whole child, I need to include mama. And one of the things I did in the last meeting I had was I gave each parent a sticky note and I asked them to share, what is your vision for your child? Do you want him to be a teacher? Do you want him to be a lawyer? Do you want him to be the majority of them? All they said is, I want him to be educated. They don't have, they don't even have a career in mind. They just want their kids to be educated. And, and I think that's so important that our parents' dreams and hopes for their child are embedded in the work that they do every day. And if we tap into that knowledge, we're going to have more success in, in our classrooms yeah, with our students. But all right, so that's the introduction, it, and it has, I'm going to see if I can share, 
my screen with you. So I don't know if you all have a Google account, but if you don't have a Google account, you will have to participate through a Padlet. So I created a Google Classroom and in this Google Classroom is where I'm going to be posting everything. I'm going to share the link with you just so if you want to look through it, but you through the link, you will join the Google Classroom and in that Google Classroom is going to be posting everything that we're doing throughout the book study. I'm not going to be emailing you. Everything is going to be posted in this Google <laughs> Classroom, and you get an email through a Google Classroom that I posted something. It's not my job to be emailing you. Google's going to do it. So once you enroll in this Google Classroom, you have access to everything that we post. I share my social media so we can stay connected that way. As a book study and as someone who loves sharing what I'm learning I'm always going to be sharing quotes from, I started today, sharing quotes using, um, I'm going to share with you a picture of um, what it looks like, because you need to be respectful of how you share stuff. So if you share a quote from a book, you need to make sure that you write the quote and you can either put the author's name in a picture of the book. Or you can just tag the author, make sure that you do that. So you can't just grab the quote from the book and share it like if it's yours. So if you're going to be sharing anything from the book, make sure that you, you Canva for teachers is free. So you can get yourself a nice Canva like this one. I, I just typed in the quote that I liked. I, I put in a picture of the book. And I share it. And that way she gets promotion. She gets the credit for the quote. And you are showing that you are engaging in this um, communications. Okay. Uh, this is what the book study is going to look like. We're going to start next week. So hopefully you get your book. If you don't, just come on with us and engage in the discussions. But we're going to start with chapter one. We're going to skip Thanksgiving. And we're going to come back the week after Thanksgiving. And then if you notice, it's every other week, except, you know, uh, is this is this skipping a week over here between 26? No, right? No, it's not skipping. I think the only week we're skipping is the one here on Thanksgiving. And I am hoping that the author would meet us when we do our book wrap up. She's very excited about us meeting about this book study. <clears throat> so she she'll meet us on this last day. So this is what it looks like every week we're going to meet again. I'm going to be posting every week the link for you to join. So you'll get that email that we're going to meet that evening. So you will you you will get um, notice about that. Um, if you do join, it's eight weeks. So if you notice, it's, it's eight chapters, even with the seven to six chapters. But today counts and. Uh, the wrap up. So that will be eight hours. So through my LLC, I will provide for you a recognition of eight hours of learning. So you can show this to your district and you get you get credit. It's almost an entire day of learning. So it's like if you were sitting at a PD for all day. So you will get the certificate once I notice that you have participated in the Zoom chat or if that evening you cannot join that Zoom chat then you need to make sure that you have provided feedback um, on the communication tabs, which it could be through the Google Classroom where you can comment like this one here. I said, hey, welcome. Go ahead and introduce yourself. So that will count as, as today. So you will introduce yourself. Um, here's the schedule so you know it. And when we go into breakout sessions, and we're going to test it right now, we are going to use a Padlet. So in this Padlet, I have either quotes or questions about the chapter. So the breakout room will open and you will go either where you are assigned to or where you choose to go to. So today I have three quotes. So some of you will stay with me. <laughs> so one of you, we're just going to test it. You, you, don't, you probably won't even have two people in your room. But we're going to test it just to see what it looks like, okay? You're going to go into your breakout session. If you haven't um, joined the uh, Google um, uh, Classroom, I'm going to share with you the Padlet. So here's the Padlet. 
go ahead and open the Padlet and that's the one you are going to use. Tatiana, did it ask you for the code when you clicked on the link? I clicked on it the did. link. It just sent me to my Google Classroom. It sent you straight. I, okay. I to click on the plus button on the top. Gotcha. And I okay. entered the join code. Okay, perfect. So it did. You did have to put in the code. Yes. Gotcha. All right. Thank you for putting that in chat in there. Okay. All right. So here's a Padlet. We're going to test it. I'm going to open the break room. And since there's only a third four of you. Um, one of you could stay with me. So Sarah, stay with me. Don't choose a breakout room. But Allison, Tatiana, and um, Janet? Did I say that right? What is it? Jeanette. Jeanette. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to open two break rooms. So just choose either quote two or quote three. And in that break room, if you would... Um, just kind of test it. You don't have to stay there long, but just test what it looks like and then come back to me. Is that okay? Hang on. Let me open the break room. Oh, it did. See, because it kicked me out, it took away the break rooms that I have designed for us. That's messed up. All right, see if it lets you choose your own room. So either one or two. So Sarah, stay here with me. And the other three of you, see if it lets you choose room one or two. There you go. Allison's gone. Net, you need me to help you? I think I need help. How do I okay. um, get into a, a room? It uh, it it, sh it should have popped up for you, but if not, I think there's some three buttons at the bottom, and it says breakout session, breakout rooms. But if not, I can send you. Let me send you to one of the rooms because okay, I can do I that too. I found it actually. You found, found it. it. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted. I wanted to make sure that you choose the, the – okay. Yep. Just try. Yeah. Go on. Okay. Go, go into one of those sessions and then come back. There you go. Everyone's gone. Yay. So Sarah, you will be here with me or you will mm -hmm. be, you know, going on to the group that you choose. Look, right. all of them went to room one. <laughs> it's so cool. So what we would do is you will go to that, that breakout session and in there mm -hmm. you will have, you will delegate someone to say, okay, we're going to discuss. Mm -hmm. And then one of us will make notes or all, all of right. you could go in there. So you and I can, check because this one let's let's look at this one our roles as mm -hmm. educators or leaders is to exalt what yeah. families and caregivers do naturally so we will discuss that quote and then we will you know type our comments I love the word exalt I had exalt. never heard yeah. I I just you know, like I've always used it at church like mm -hmm. exalting God mm -hmm. but and then you know what? I never thought about using it about mm -hmm. exalting the work that my mother did for me. That to me is, is just sublime. It's just so beautiful. And what they do naturally. I just yes. love that. Exalted. Yes. Oh. Natural. Mm -hmm. Because awesome. sometimes our parents might think that I oh, just me cooking tacos every night mm -hmm. may not be anything important, but Hey, you know, like when I make mm -hmm. my tamales and I teach Hannah, you know, this is what you do with the tomatoes and this is what you do. You know, she's learning right. and, and she teaches in her book mm -hmm. that that's what literacy is about. The literacy is mm -hmm. the communication, the talking and right. the teaching. It doesn't have to be ABCs. It could be the natural nope. environment in the home. I love that. Um, yeah, that's so a great quote. I love it. I'm going to close the room because if not, they're not going to come back. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I close the rooms. Were you able to get into the Google Classroom? Which you don't have to. Yeah, unless yeah. you think you're really going to join the club, then mm -hmm. the book study, yeah. then you okay. can go ahead and, right. and do that. Yeah, I tried. I'll, look, I'll play around with this room. Isn't, I know we have Google on, like, I know we can, but. Hmm. It won't let you? Mm -mm. It takes me to a different, like, a like you don't have access, but I think it might be oh, because maybe the one I'm assigned into. 
No, mm -hmm. I, I think our Cabarrus County Google is not going to let you because I tested it with oh. uh, one of my teacher friends and she, because it's mm -hmm. Cabarrus County, you don't have a personal Google? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, I'm going to do I need yeah, to switch you it. You may have to mm -hmm. log in with your Google account. Yeah, I'll try that. Yeah. All right. I don't know why they're uh, are they coming back. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got to bring them back. They're stuck over there. <laughs> we used all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, generally, it'll be more time like that. Like while you guys were gone, we were discussing one of the quotes. Which quotes were you guys discussing? Oh, we chose the second one. Oh, good, good, good. Sarah and I, we were talking about the first quote. And then again, I, you know, I wouldn't do much tonight, but in your groups, you will delegate someone who could do the typing. Or if all of you have something to say, you will go where it says add comment and you will add your comments because I didn't go to your session. So I would want to know what the conversation was about. So if you have time later, go into the Padlet and add any of the comments that you had about quote number two. And Sarah and I will go later and add comments. We're talking about the naturally, whatever, you know, caregivers do things naturally at home that they don't see it as literacy, but it is literacy. And so Sarah and I will go in there and add comments to it so you can get a little more idea of our discussion. So technically, that's what it's going to look like. And then we all come together and we kind of talk among ourselves what the breakout discussions was about. Um, and then you have access to what everyone has to say. I'm not the only one who is going to be, I can, these are just conversation starters. So that's why I have this quotes. This is going to get the conversation started, but you, do you have this little plus in your Padlet? You can add your own quote. You can add your own comment. So people can add responses to your comment as well. So don't feel like, oh, Miss Francis didn't put any, Emily didn't put anything there. No, it's because I'm, placing in their conversation starters, but you are welcome to add anything to the column as you please. So if you want to add anything to the introduction, you can go ahead and do so as well. All right. So the Google Classroom, like Sarah was trying to figure it out right now, but if you are not 100% sure that you want to join the book study, then don't join the book uh, the Google Classroom yet because if not you're going to start getting all those emails and you only want to get those emails if you really want to be part of the book study okay all right what questions do you have for me oh any suggestions the meetings will start at 7 p.m. Do you, you guys think that's a good time? I I think it's a good time. It gave me enough time for me to finish finish my daughter's, you know, cook dinner, relax a little bit, just get some work done. And 7 o'clock seemed doable for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did it work for everybody? Yeah. Yeah, right? Okay. Are you all Eastern time or any of you? No. What are you? I'm Central. in Illinois, so it's Central Time, but Central. that works fine for me Perfect. as well. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, we don't want to do it anything earlier, and I don't mm. want to do anything so late because, yeah, I need my my glass of wine already. <laughs> All right. Um, again, uh, I I don't know. I mean, I, I, in the Google Classroom, if you don't have my connections, is right here. But you can email me or send me a message. You know how you, you have the link somehow because you connected with me somewhat. But it, let me know if you have any questions. But the only way you're gonna hear from me from now on is through this Google Classroom. I'm gonna post links. I'm gonna post the comments. And our communication uh, will begin next week with chapter one. Again, if you don't have the book yet, come on, join us. Join the conversation just like we did today. And you can catch on with the book when you get your book. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. If you don't have any questions, I'll let you go. Thank you so much for your time today. And I look forward to learning with you and getting some more ideas because I do need more ideas on family engagement. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Emily. No, thank you. Thank you, Emily. Have a great evening. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.